today have this beautiful oak extension. First thing we do is protect all this oak. Wonderful oak extension. You see, the uh, couple of the ceiling sections are now completed. Um, this I had to use bandstands and um, my platform. It's actually a great combo because this is about three and a half meters high to the top there. You see all that lovely green oak. So I've obviously I've protected them. Protection is absolutely crucial, and um, from I was experimenting with all sorts of different tapes. I'm always keen to try new, new tapes and new products. And the frog tape, I must say, just the standard green frog tape seems to have worked the best so far from a plastering perspective. It's kept the plaster off. It didn't allow any seepage, if you look along that line there, occasionally with some tapes. This is green oak, it's not been sealed, so um, water will stain this black. You can, you can rub it down and sand it and bring it back nice, but um, it's just a lot of extra effort. So we do our best so that that's not necessary. But that green tape has worked beautifully along there. Very happy with that. And now, today, we are going to set up over this side. This is a really fun section. Look at that, beautiful angles. Um, I didn't plasterboard this. Um, it was done by the lovely builders. Um, it's fine. Not exactly, not exactly how I would have done it myself, but it's fine. So I've protected all there already. Um, but for now, I've only got a very short day today because I've got my, I had to drop my girls off at school and pick them up again. Uh, which I split with my wife. So I'm just gonna get a little set on. I've got a bit here to do, I'll do along there. And there's some making good in this bathroom. And then uh, I shall prepare for the final day tomorrow where I'll be setting this beautiful section. set up to get my so I've got um, a little set on here so I'm set up all there to get that little set on there and I am also set up over here so I can fully access this three and a half meter high ceiling to prepare so what I'll do uh, as I've only got a half day today I will be during that set in between waiting times I'll be preparing this getting the beads on See, I've already started over there. Um, scrimming, putting the scrim fibre tape on all the joins and edges. Coffee 
time, my favourite. Um, it's all half out now. Bear in mind, it's minus two today. Um, I am inside, but this is a unheated uh, extension, no extension. I do have a little radiator, so it's not so bad. Now it's warming up, it's certainly far from warm in here. So I've added two uh, to the mix. Um, I've added some half time. So it's just under a bag, but you want, well, it's exactly as it describes. It speeds up the set in half. So this will give me, um, so instead of the normal two, two and a half, three to the three and a half hours, that I'll be getting this hopefully one and a half to two hours, probably, probably closer to the two, honest, because it is cold. So whilst this half time, is, is really good, it does it does speed up the set quite a lot. In cold temperatures, just like normal plaster, it's still a bit slower, so you do have a little bit more time. Still much quicker than without, so definitely worth using, especially such, this is, I mean, any, any plaster will tell you the set I've actually got on is pretty tiny, um, but I am gonna do some prep as well. Um, there is also some detailing in the bathroom, it's not too much, it's, um, of reveal and some making good mental corners but not a big area. Um, but yeah, that, that allows me time to do prepping in between um, and then I am back tomorrow to finish it off. So it's had the first coat, um, I've given it a quick speed skim, I'll probably give it a quick trowel as well just before I put the second coat. Well, the second coat's all on as you can see. Um, I've washed out and cleaned up all the buckets, all the tools, get everything ready before flatten. It's even with the half time, so that's one, one of those bags of half time does 12 and a half uh, kilograms of plaster, so basically half a bag. So if you're mixing a full bag, you will want uh, two, as, as I did, you'll want two sachets. Um, however, you know, the whole point for most people. Um, perhaps that don't do it day in day out. They might they might not want to do a whole bag. So that's that's a decent chunk if you're uh, if you're just on your own and uh, not used to doing it. Uh, so yeah, that's why they sell them in two sachets. Um, it would be nice, I think, if they started doing bigger ones. But I suppose that's handy. But yeah, so we're all prepped and cleaned and ready. Um, it now wants a few more minutes um, before a flatten. Thank you. 
its socket. Obviously it's been buried, I don't know if you can see um, when... I mean it can happen to anyone, but um, when cutting, so on this one, I'll just turn you around and see. So another tip with plaster, with, with uh, these sockets, so you can see there, the um, socket doesn't line up. The uh, the builders that dabbed it, they've they've put some adhesive in the bottom, which I'll trim straight, which is which is great. Nothing wrong with that. Um, the one over there is similar. I'll show you this one. Again, this is this is fairly um, this is fairly common. It can happen. It's easily done. I've done it myself many times. It's not the end of the world. So, and this one was just like that. So what I what we do, um, I put scrim tape under uh, around exactly the correct opening. So I'll show you on this one. <clears throat> so I'll get some scrim tape, and I will line the scrim tape up just right with the opening. This is reinforcement mesh and it's also good to use as a guide. So then, when I plaster it, I will then hug, make sure I put plaster right in behind that socket to fill the gap. Then you need to let that obviously tighten, it's not a problem. And then two coats later, you've got this. So, that's what it looks like after two coats later. So then at this stage, I've just given it a flatten. It's firming up a bit now. So now is a great time to cut it. So what I will do is just cut all it. Well, sometimes you can just pull it out, but you can sometimes pull too much away if you, if you do that. So what I like to do is find the bottom and then I'll use this trowel as a guide. See there? And then also, if you do dig out, you see I've taken a chunk out there, what you can do is put your trowel back up to the edge and press it in, because it's still quite pliable at the minute. It's stiff but pliable. And then you can firm it up with your finger and then slide down there. Just had a flatten. And we'll do the same with this side. I can hear that squirm. See it now? cut away. It's super easy to cut right now. If I'd have left this until I'd finished, you can do it, but it's much more challenging. It's, it's much harder, it's much stiffer, so it'll require a sharper, stronger knife, or a bit more elbow grease. And if you crack it, or you risk cracking around the edges, it's not as easy to fill. Now it's right now. It's quite easy, so you see there. I've just messed up the edge a little bit. So I'll put that there, hold the trowel up, stuff it. So I fill the gap with this plaster. I'll either do it at this stage or during the first wet trail, um, depending. This is actually pulling in quite nicely. Um, sometimes, if it's hanging a bit, I'll, I'll wait till the, the first wet trail. But this is pulling quite nicely, so that now is much better. You can see both screws. So the important thing for the electrician, he needs to be able to see both those little metal brackets either end so he can get his screws in and put the plate on and then the edges are all proud so the socket will fit on that flush and there won't be anything any cracks or visible plaster also not super happy with this dark blue tape you can see it's let a bit of seepage through there a little bit it's not too bad but also you'll notice it's gone really crinkly that's the moisture so obviously it's to be expected when plastering a room, you get a lot of moisture. I don't know if you can see how wet that is. 
um, but that is not really something, as a plasterer for, for tape, that's not something you want to happen. Um, if that was left too long, that will then end up leaving residue, I'm almost certain. Um, and it's actually not done the job either, because it's got so wet, it's actually come away a little bit. So um, I won't be using that dark blue tape again for plastering edges. And that is now all finished. And there's a lovely details. I really do quite like these details around here where you're matching in. It's a bit hard to see there. The details in there where the plaster runs right into the brick. So that's decorated. I do like those details. But it's areas like that where tape is so important. Because uh, even with the best will in the world, if you don't tape it, you're going to struggle. You might be amazing and be able to keep it clean, but most of us humans um, are not going to be able to keep that as clean as that if it wasn't masking tape. Or as I should say, brick tape. <laughs>